In this video, I want to talk to you about dynamic content. It's a new feature in Modic 2.0, and it is really awesome. It takes a little bit of work to get ready, but it's worth it in the end. When a known contact comes to your website, wouldn't it be great to show them content specifically designed for them? Well, that's what dynamic content is for. A known contact must be part of a campaign in order to trigger this, and I'll demonstrate that. One of our developers, Don, has set up a test campaign with dynamic content, so let me take you through it in order to show you how it works. We start by accessing dynamic content here under Components, and you set up at least one element of dynamic content. We call this the default, and here in the default content, we've just got a quick paragraph. This is the default text to show, if a contact is in a campaign, but no actions are rendered when that campaign is triggered. It's going to say, hi, Rod, take a look at modic.org. All right. As the campaign is triggered, the default text will show, unless certain actions taken, update it to a different set of dynamic content. So here under the action test, it's going to say the non-default content returned from an action. Hi, Rod, now you should look at modic.org. All right, so you can have as many of these as you want tied to a single campaign. Each one can be displayed to a contact under different set of circumstances. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to head over to Campaigns and Don's DW Test Campaign. And here's what I mean. If a contact is in the DW Test segment, now this can come from a segment or a form. As you know, when you're building a campaign, you can set it up with a form or a segment. As soon as the segment is identified, a decision is rendered. This one is requesting dynamic content. And if I click on that, we're requesting the dynamic content. And the request slot name is slot2. Now, this can be any name you want. It doesn't have to say slot2. But the default content that comes out of that is Don's DWC default. Once that request is made, you can trigger a number of conditions. In this case, I'm using a contact field value for if their first name equals Rod, and if their last name equals Martin, which happens to be my name, then push dynamic content out to Rod Martin and change the default to the action test. If either of these conditions fail, then the dynamic content would be the default. If they pass, then I get the updated dynamic content. And I can add as many decision trees to this as I want. So if I had dynamic content specifically for Rod, here under my last name, where the second condition would fail if it wasn't Rod Martin, I could then push different dynamic content, say DC1. Push alternate and just join those together. You can create a pretty elaborate system of dynamic web content using the campaign builder. All right, let's go ahead and save this and do the final step. The final step being embedding a specific piece of code in either your landing page or using one of the content management system plugins that we have available for Modic. Let me demonstrate it with a static HTML page. So here's the important piece. P class equals lead, div class equals modic dash slot, data slot name equals slot two. This is critical. This is how your website will know which dynamic content to present. This text shows if the person is not a known contact at all. Here's how it looks on the page. And now I'm going to refresh because I'm a known contact. When I'm a known contact, then my first name equals Rod and my last name equals Martin. Well, then here's what I'll get. If my last name hadn't been Martin, I would have received the other piece of dynamic content called DC1. Dynamic content allows you to set a default piece of content for a known contact. If the contact is not known, then that information needs to appear on your web page. Once the contact is known, they'll get the pull for the default. And if they pass any tests that you've added, well, then they'll receive the revised version of your dynamic content. 
If you're not running any tests at all, then it's as simple as joining those two together and requesting the same content as before. And so now the pull and the push are essentially doing the same thing. You'll still need both to make that work. Dynamic web content can really change up how your website delivers information. It's fantastic, it's new, and it's in Modic 2.0.